Welcome in to another episode of Betting the Pitch. I'm your host, The Real Underscore G Warner. Uh, today, we're going to go through the uh, many sports, uh, well, European soccer leagues that are going this weekend. Uh, I don't think I'm going to touch on Spain on this podcast as I haven't seen any Copa del Rey matches. Usually, it's the big teams from the Premier Division on the road at lower league competition that I don't know a lot about. Um, and if there's no lines, there's not much for me to talk about. Uh, it is Friday morning here in Dallas, Texas. Thank you for joining, whether on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. Um, if you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, subscribe again, hit the five stars, leave a review, all that sort of stuff. If you can, helps me out a ton. Uh, if you're on Twitter, appreciate that. Hit the follow button, smash that button, slide some DMs, hit me in the notifications uh, or at me and we'll, we'll chat. Uh, again, the real underscore G Warner on Twitter is probably where you find most of this. Um and I'm going to go through each of the, the leagues to talk about. So the four uh, besides Spain, and then try to give a best bet for each of the leagues with an ultimate best bet end of show. Um, and without further ado, uh, all lines quoted on this podcast are courtesy of betonline.ag. It's my favorite place to get my bets down early. Reduced juice is offered on almost every game you want to bet right, right up until game time. Follow the link found in the podcast description below. Uh, and you can fund your account use the promo code GW50 to receive a 50% match bonus up to one thousand dollars. So, uh, if you want to, if you want to load an account with two grand, uh, you get a free one K. Uh, and you can thank me. You can send it my way, and uh, you can hopefully win some of these plays we're putting together. And uh, we'll both get rich in the process. Uh, we'll start with the Premier League because that's where the money is. And Manchester City hosts Brentford, a two and a quarter goal favorite. Um, Man City looked pretty good. <laughs> Somehow they they kept a clean sheet against Chelsea in the EFL Carabao Cup this week. Uh, a lot of these English teams played midweek matches in the cup. Um, and that was a big result considering Chelsea started, I think, a, a stronger lineup based on what their um their roster looked like. But Man City, I mean, they just they do what they do. Um, they got uh, a, a great goal um to take the lead and then got another one right in quick succession. And once that happened, Chelsea really just couldn't finish any chances. Great, great performance. Stefan Ortega, uh, the former Armenia Bielefeld keeper who came over and has been a backup and has not played at all behind Ederson, but he was great. Um, as for this matchup, Man City, a two and a quarter goal favorite. Um, they're really hard to, to fade. Uh, I've had some pretty good success going against them this season, but I don't think that they're um, a team I want to be against very often, especially with the Brentford side who just haven't really looked like they've been the team they were last season. Their offense is better, it seems, but it's still kind of tough to, to predict and their defense is worse. Um, and I don't really like the chance going into Man City and and just begging to hang around and only lose 2-0 it only pays you half a bet at this point. So uh, not going to make my card, I don't believe. Tottenham then hosts Leeds, certainly Tottenham, a three-quarter goal favorite with all the juice off of really some bad performances lately. Um, Eric Dyer just like constantly making big mistakes. Uh, don't know if that kept him out of the English England squad, but uh, I, I hope that he will be making them on an even bigger stage for the World Cup because I, uh, you can color me a uh, an England hater, um, and I'm – Happy to take that. Uh, uh, very happy we threw a bunch of tea in the Boston Harbor in 1776 or whatever. Anyway, Tottenham, a three-quarter goal favorite with all the juice. I hope this climbs to one. Um, Leeds rotated significantly midweek uh, in their cup match. Um, I don't know if that was – I mean, surprised to see teams not take the cup competition seriously. Leeds certainly have a lot of depth to their squad, but um, they seem to use none of it. Uh, put a lot of young players on the bench. And ultimately, a lot of their success lately, though, has come from young players. Um, incredible comeback against Bournemouth. Um, the, the late winner against Liverpool as well. Um, everything happening late. And uh, um, one was to my chagrin. The Bournemouth collapse has been ridiculous, but I'll get to them in a little while. Um, Tottenham, on the other hand, uh, they can't score goals in the first half. They let people come on to you. And that didn't really work for Jose Mourinho. And it's Antonio Conte's style, and he's not changing. Um, that's how they won the Scudetto at Inter Milan and ended Juventus's huge run of, of consecutive championships. I think it was nine at the, that point, um, but it doesn't really work, especially as a big favorite. Um, they've had some miraculous covers late. I, I mean, this team I I truly despise because um, I've made some really good bets on that or against them, really, and they score late. I mean, the Marseille victory to, to win the Champions League group was incredible. Uh, in the 95th minute or whatever. Um, what they did against Nottingham Forest was crazy. It's just like this Tottenham team, they don't deserve to be a big favorite. They really don't. 
Um, and they don't score in first halves that seemingly ever. So I feel like there's a, if there's a time to play leads, they don't hit that plus one mu- number. Maybe you uh, take a little bit lesser of, of a price and, and try to play leads in that first half. Um, question is whenever you're playing leads as, a, as an underdog, uh, or really that's the only time I, I look to play them because I, I like to be against them as a favorite. Um, they play so aggressively and honestly, it's psychotic at this point. It's not as bad as the way Bielsa was playing, but Jesse Marsh is, uh, I mean, you can see why he doesn't last long. I mean, no manager in, in this game lasts long many places, but I can kind of see why Jesse Marsh doesn't hang around because he's too aggressive. And, and unfortunately the team, teams are too good. You can't keep your energy levels up that high, even with five subs, it just doesn't really work. Uh, and the Leeds defense and, and really their team in general is not that strong. Uh, I do lean to that three quarters of a goal, though. I'm waiting for that plus one on the road at Tottenham. Nottingham Forest and host Crystal Palace coming off that big cup win in the midweek over Tottenham. Uh, currently Nottingham Forest, a quarter goal underdog at home to Crystal Palace. And that's something I'm really interested in, I got to say, because Crystal Palace offensively is is really challenged. Um I don't really know that I believe they can score goals even at home where they have huge, huge home support, crowd support, and it really boosts them, buoys them, if you want, if you will. Um, not even forcing on the other hand, they, I mean, they took the, the cup match midweek more seriously than I think a lot of people would have expected considering they're fighting to stay in the league. Uh, but they didn't use everybody. They, they've got a pretty deep squad because they've paid so much money uh, to bring in new talent. Um, currently all the juices on not even forced at that quarter goal. Maybe it falls to pick them and I don't have anything to play with. Um, but I do like that that side quite a bit at home. And, and a lot of it is is kind of I figured out my soccer strategy for the season. It, it's going against road favorites that just aren't really that strong. I feel like it's worked pretty well so far percentage wise, looking to certainly add more units to that total. Um, I, I guess I also lean to under two and a quarter, but I think I like not even for at home getting a quarter more. Um, Liverpool then hosts Southampton, Liverpool, a one and three quarter goal favorite. And maybe the uh, the tide is changing for Liverpool a little bit. They're playing a lot better, of course. Um, but I still don't believe in them, really. Uh, Southampton on the other side at one and three quarter goal underdogs on the road. I think I need to see that hit plus two. It, it looks like it's trending in that direction based on the juices at the moment. Um, but just I, I think they fired Ralph Hasenhutl. It seemed like that was unconfirmed reports. But um, usually they're, they're more confirmed than they're unconfirmed. Um, and, and Liverpool, you know... They had to play midweek uh, in the cup. Um, Southampton, I think, did as well. So, I mean, most of these teams did. But uh, I don't know if there's enough for, for me at Southampton, even at plus two. I just I haven't had a great success, track record success betting against Liverpool this year. They've, they've done really poorly in games I haven't bet them or ha- haven't bet against them. Um, I guess besides Napoli and, 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 and Ajax, I won a couple of those. So maybe not as bad as I'm thinking. But I've had the, the Tottenham match was brutal. And a lot of it was Tottenham's own fault. But um Liverpool is a big favorite. I still think is a side I'd like to be against. I just don't think Southampton are the one. Bournemouth then hosts Everton. Um, I feel like this just happened in the midweek. Uh, Bournemouth currently a pick em, hosting Everton. Uh, all the juice in Everton on the road. Um, Bournemouth played really well midweek. Um, both these teams rotated quite a bit. Um, and I was more fearful of Bournemouth's rotation, especially because the market was backing Everton right until kickoff. Um, and I wonder what happens with this line. Bournemouth have, I mean, they've been in great positions to win uh against Leeds up 3-1, uh 2-0 against Tottenham as well. Um, but couldn't hold on to either of them. And then one of them didn't even cover, lost half a half a, a unit because they were a three-quarter goal underdog and lost by a single goal, and then uh pushed a plus one at Leeds last weekend. Um, I, I'm starting to wonder if their caretaker manager, who seemed to start off really well and got some big results after a nine-nil loss to Liverpool. If he's uh, someone that should be replaced over the World Cup window, that's probably when it happens. Um, they do have that, uh, I guess, cohesion with him still in the, in the role right now, as far as I know. Uh, and the Cup win midweek certainly helps. But Everton just don't score goals. And on the road, it's really hard to trust them. I, I, I like their defense. They they played a lot better than I think anyone expected, but likely because they've had to. Um and as a road favorite, similar to what I just said, uh, I'm looking to go against road favorites that don't deserve it. And I feel like Bournemouth are um, trending towards that quarter goal underdog. They're not there yet. Also lean to under two and a quarter. West Ham hosts Le- Leicester. Currently West Ham, a quarter goal favorite at home with all the juice. And that seems pretty cheap, but Leicester have certainly turned up their their play. I mean, they had nowhere to go but up from bottom of the table and looking like Brendan Rodgers was like begging to be fired or sacked. Um, West Ham, on the other hand, had a really tough close to their match with Crystal Palace last week, then had cup midweek. Um, 
Leicester also had cup. I mean, all these teams did. So I guess I can stop mentioning that as a, a f- fatigue um, commentary. But West Ham's offense is just look. It's not great. Um, Skamaka was pretty um, unrefined, I guess is the way I'd say it at Sassuolo then signed for West Ham and, and really has been a, a bright spot for them, but, uh, I don't think he's very consistent or that polished. Uh, Mikel Antonio is a good bench player, uh, but he's coming on for 25 minutes at a time. It seems 30, 35. Um, and that's a lot of time for him because he works really hard, but I don't know that he's ever been that strong and really had a great run that, that bolstered and brought West Ham into the Europa leagues, uh, or European competitions. But, um, that doesn't look like that's continuing. West Ham's defense uh, doesn't really seem to be working. I mean, the the back pass or, or the pass, I guess, out playing out from out the back um, from Craig Dawson to Tilo Kerr was a joke. And the English media, of course, get on the German, not the English player, though the English player gave him a hospital pass. It's hilarious. And it also speaks to why I love so, I mean, I'm not that pro USA, I got to say, but I do love that we threw a lot of tea in, in Boston Harbor. Um Anyway, lean to Leicester, getting a quarter of a goal, hoping that they, it climbs to a half so that when they go on the road and draw, I'll win a f- full bet. Um, I don't really know that Leicester will get a ton of respect here because they're not seen as the same type of team they have been in the past. And West Ham have been dominating the Europa Conference League um, or Europa League or whatever one they're in. But um, I don't trust West Ham. I don't like them as a favorite. I never really have. I think they're an underdog to, to play on, uh, but, but a, a favorite to fade. Uh, next, we have Newcastle hosting Chelsea and kind of a surprising line for me. Uh, Newcastle, a quarter goal favorite at home. They've been playing great and you can't certainly say anything about their performances. Um, but Chelsea are a stronger team with a bigger budget, um, but they look lost. Uh, I'm starting to wonder if Graham Potter is uh, uh, might not even last season. I mean, they he should and, and I'd, I'd be surprised if he didn't because he's basically playing with uh, Thomas Tuchel's men and uh, say what you want about him, but he certainly wasn't the best at uh, at building a team. Uh, Chelsea just have real goal-scoring problems. Kai Havertz is about as wasteful of chances as anyone in the world not named Timo Werner. Um, get well soon, Timo. Uh, but unfortunately, both of them played for the same club, and uh, it looks like what happens when you have ownership turning over and you're bringing in a lot of guys that don't really know what they're doing. Um, Chelsea did win the Champions League, but that seemed to be def- defense based off of Thomas Kukul's strategy and, and really was a big upset over Man City. Um, but besides that, the team's been pretty uh, lackluster, I think, over the past few seasons. Um, Newcastle playing really well, and uh, I'm not really looking to, to go against them when they're going to have a huge crown support at home. And Chelsea are kind of licking their wounds. Um, they had a bunch of chances that fell to players that can't score. Christian Pulisic, unfortunately, Captain America just can't do it for Chelsea. Um, when he does rarely play, probably something he needs to play more often, but that doesn't seem to be changing. Uh, and then the new young player that they started, every chance fell to him and he kicked it right at the goalkeeper every time, it seemed. So um, not going great for Chelsea at the moment. Lean to under two and a half. But honestly, the way Newcastle have been throwing up goals lately, and it kind of, I think, all stems from their big crowd. Uh, I just don't know that's something I want to get in the, in the way of. Wolves then host Arsenal the last match on Saturday. We have a ton of matches on Saturday in England. Uh, Wolves, a one goal underdog, single goal underdog at home to Arsenal. Um, Wolves with a good result in the cup midweek, but I don't know how you can trust anything from those two teams or from that team to back it up. Uh, Arsenal have been playing over their skis, I think, so far. The performances have not really justified where they sit in the table, uh, but I'm not backing Wolves to change that at all this weekend. Um, and I don't think under two and three quarters even makes sense either, though Wolves are, are pretty unlikely to contribute because I think Arsenal can get to three. Uh, Brighton then hosts Aston Villa on Sunday. Brighton, a half a goal favorite. And they're a tough team to, to kind of figure at this point. Um, some good performances and some really poor ones. Um, but coming back, I guess, from the dead to, to beat Wolves, but surrendering, to, giving up and conceding two goals to Wolves is pretty problematic. But anyway, um, Brighton is a half a goal favorite. I mean, Deserby is still, he hasn't taken the chains off. He's still playing the Graham Potter style and it's working fairly well for Brighton. Uh, I'm still waiting for all at attack and, and I don't know when that's going to come, but uh, Aston Villa, you know, they, they had two matches with Manchester United had a good upset victory on the weekend on Sunday and then had the cup midweek. Um, Unai Emery is going to come in he's going to play defensive brand of football, but maybe not against Brighton because he's not seeing them as a, as a, a, a much better side. Uh, I'm still curious to see what Unai Emery is going to do with Aston Villa because um, he has never really been an offensive genius and 
that's been a big problem for Aston Villa, their, their goal scoring. So I imagine the defense looks pretty good. So that makes half a goal on the road look look fine, especially um, at even money right now. You might even see three quarters of a goal on, on Aston Villa. But by the time this kicks off, I don't think it probably close. It probably will close one half. Um, but a draw on the road uh, pays you a full bet. That's interesting to me. So I, I lean that way and under two and a half. Fulham then hosts Manchester United. Fulham a half a goal underdog at home to Manchester United. Fulham, uh, they're starting to look like the the luster is rubbing off. They had a great start to the season, were really aggressive, um, but they haven't been great since then. The late penalty concession to Manchester City last weekend was brutal. Um, American making bad tackles late, probably was tired and a little panicked, um, trying to hold on for dear life. Not great, and unfortunately it cost them a really important point. Uh, and I wonder if they're going to start trending towards that relegation area because um, there's a big log jam in the Premier League. But Manchester United have been playing really well. Ten Hag is, uh, I think, starting to, to look like a, a competent manager after it really looked ugly at the beginning. Um, but he's got control of the team. It's working fairly well. And I think Fulham on the front foot is going to give a lot of opportunities for Manchester United to counterattack. That's where they're best. And that really scares me, Getting a, even getting a half of a goal at home. So to recap, uh, for Premier League, for a best bet for this uh, final match day before the World Cup, uh, speaking of, there's going to be a lot of World Cup content coming out um, from me through pregame, hopefully through some other outlets and, and also uh, on this Bet and Pitch podcast. So stay tuned because uh, we're going we're gonna to make some money, uh, no doubt about that. Brentford, a two and a quarter goal underdog on the road at Man City. I'm not that interested in. Uh, I do like Leeds, but I want to see plus one. I uh, don't think a total is really worth staring there uh, at there. Uh, not in force. I like getting a quarter of a goal at home. If it falls to a pick em, I think I'd play under two and a quarter. Um, but like both sides in that one uh, or side and total um, Southampton, not worth it. Uh, Bournemouth, I do like, but I want to see them get the, a quarter goal underdog at home. It might get there uh, based on the movement this midweek. Um, lean under two and a quarter there as well. Um Leicester, I like getting a quarter on the road at West Ham um, and might even see a half of a goal, which I'll certainly like better. Chelsea, I think I skip, though the, certainly a, a surprising line for me on that one, but I guess not based on form table. Wolves, I'm not interested in. Aston Villa, I like that that under two and a half, but also the, the half of a goal they're they're receiving right now from Brighton. Uh, I don't think the Brighton offense is good enough to, to really do either of those numbers in. Um, and then Fulham, I don't think are, are good enough for me. I'm going to play uh, Nottingham Forest as my best bet for England, getting a quarter of a goal at home to Crystal Palace. I just feel like Crystal Palace are the weakest road favorite in this league. Uh, so nothing in Spain. I'm going to move straight to the Italian Serie A. And we do have a Friday match, Empoli hosting Cremonese. Empoli a pick em right now with all the juice. Uh, and that's a pretty respectful line for Cremonese or a really disrespectful line for Empoli. Uh, Empoli played Napoli really tight in the midweek, but uh, ultimately couldn't hold on. Uh, eventually the, the ketchup got out of the bottle and then it got worse and they lost two nil. And I think they only didn't even cover. Um, but Cremonese on the other hand, just haven't really looked like they've been, uh, competitive enough for me to want to back. Um, I think this is a time for Empoli to get right. Uh, so I don't know that there's much for me there. I guess I lean under two and a half if anything, uh, in that one, uh, moving to Saturday, Napoli hosting Udinese, Napoli, a one and a quarter goal favorite, all the juice on Udinese on the road. Um, uh, Napoli just, I mean, they keep winning. They're, they're playing so well. And, and even, even when they're not playing well, they're getting three points and, and winning by lopsided score lines and covering spreads. Um, Udinese on the other hand, haven't had a great run of late start off the year really well, uh, and, and look really competent, but it's really scary to go against Napoli, especially at home right now, as everyone's going to be out to play because there's going to be no meaningful soccer for Italian clubs for a month after this weekend, essentially. Um, yeah, I guess I lean to Udinese, but it's not that strong at the moment. Fading Napoli is not something I'm trying to do as as actively as uh, as uh, other teams. Sampdoria then hosts Lecce. Currently, Sampdoria, I pick them right now with all the juice at home. Uh, lean to Lecce. Hope they climb to a quarter of a goal underdog. Um, they've looked competent all season. Sampdoria have not. Um, Lecce, newly promoted side. I think they won Serie B last season. Uh, they've looked right at home. The results haven't really followed, and I've been backing a lot of those teams where they've been playing back in their performances over results and i think that's the right thing to do uh pick them not much for me to do with yet but i, I do like it if that climbs to a quarter and under two looks interesting because there's not a lot of offense in this game bologna then hosts sassuolo bologna a quarter goal favorite at home um 
I don't really know what to do with this one. Uh, I lean to Sassuolo on the road. They're a scary team to back away. Defense doesn't really travel in any sport, uh, especially with Sassuolo, um, but they do have a much better offense than Bologna. I do worry about Arnautovic, though, um, causing some problems for Sassuolo's center backs, um, which are not strong, um, but Sassuolo have a better offense in general, and I kind of like that on the road, getting a quarter of a goal because the draw wins half a bet. Uh, so that'd be my lean on that nightcap on Saturday. Moving to Sunday, Atalanta host Inter Milan. Um, Atalanta was a really good, I thought, performance against Napoli at home last week, but it wasn't good enough to get a draw. Um, and they're yet again a quarter goal underdog uh, to another big, pure blood, purebred, one of the seven sisters or whatever, six sisters, whatever they call it in Syria. Uh, um, I'm not in love with Inter. I got to say they've had much better success in Champions League this year than they've had in Syria, uh, which is usually the opposite. They usually they smoke everyone in Syria and struggle in Champions League. Um, I think Atalanta not having European play has been big for them, um, though with both playing uh, midweek matches this week, that's been a little bit more challenging on their legs. Um, but I, I like At- Atalanta as the home dog. I think they're going to put it and give it to Inter. And I feel like um, Insagi is just kind of showing that he's not the same level of manager playing the same style that Conte had so much success with at Inter. Uh, and I, I like Atalanta getting that quarter at home. Roma then hosts Torino, only giving half of a goal, which is a little bit surprising to me. It seems really short. Torino getting a fair amount of respect lately by the marketplace. And, and the Serie A market is one that I certainly trust almost more than any other European soccer market at this point. They seem to know what they're doing, and I'm not alleging match fixing. The, that's certainly something that happened in the past. Um, I'm I'm a little surprised why Roma is only half a goal favorite, um, but um, certainly not enough for me to back Torino at this point, I don't think. Monza then hosts Salernitana. Currently Monza, a quarter goal favorite with all the juice as well. Uh, Monza have been a darling of the marketplace for all of the season, it feels like. Um, started to drift a little bit, but coming back here with what will likely be a half a goal favorite when they close Salernitana. Um, I really love D- Davide Nicoletti, I think it is, the manager for, for Sampdoria, or excuse me, for Salernitana, not Sampdoria. Uh, huge distinction between those two clubs. Um, but when Monza moved to half a goal favorite, I really like Salernitana because I don't really trust Monza to score. And I feel like Salernitana did a lot of business. They've got a lot of kind of veteran, um, gritty Italian players who, who kind of know how to play football and it's why they stayed up in the league miraculously last season. Uh, I feel like this is just a continuation of that. And if they move to half a goal underdog, I feel like that's way too high, even like it a quarter at the, at the moment. Um, Verona then hosts Spezia, two teams that are just really awful, but one team's got to be favored here. Apparently Verona a quarter goal favorite at home with all the juice might even climb to a half. And Verona has been really unlucky this season, but um, the snowball has, 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 uh, I guess snowballed um, and they're just really not very good. They haven't gotten any results. Their scores have been bad yet. They're favored here uh, and and likely will have to win um, or, or draw will pay a full bet by the time this one kicks off. If the line continues going where it's going uh, Spezia, they have a manager I like, but they haven't really been getting the results um, that I thought he would get from being more defensive. They tried to, I mean, they were an attack only team last season and then they brought in defensive manager and that hasn't seemed to work. Um, which is a problem, but I'm sure the longer that he's there, the more impact he's going to have. And uh, fading Verona as a favorite seems like a really good idea right now. It's hard to do it with like uh, the other worst performing team in Serie A, but I, I lean that way at the moment. AC Milan then hosts Fiorentina, um, two pure blo- big, bl- wow, blue bloods, easy for me to say. Uh, Milan, a three quarter goal favorite right now at home. It's a little bigger than I made it. I kind of was in between one half and three quarters here. Um, Fiorentina's offense has not been very good, unfortunately, and there's no way to, to split that. Uh, they've got some talent there, but losing ever since they lost Dusan Vlajovic to Juventus, they just haven't really been the same. Milan, on the other hand, haven't really been as good this season as they were as Scudetto champions last season um, and had to, I guess, deal with uh, Champions League. And, and that has gone well as they moved through, but uh, we're no match for Chelsea. who has been struggling big time as we already talked about, but uh, lean to Fiorentina at three quarters on the road. Um, certainly would love to get plus one, but I don't think it'll get there. And last but not least, Juventus hosting Lazio currently Juventus, a half a goal favorite at home. Um, they're do- going through the youth movement. They've been playing a ton of young players and getting a lot of, um, a lot of output from them, I got to say, but it's almost because they're senior players and their, their veterans or older players have just done nothing. So it's like, might as well try something because it's not working um which is weird to say that as a half goal favorite to a team like Lazio have been really good unfortunately Lazio have missed Giro Mobile significantly 
Um, they had a really good result, though, upset on the road at uh, at Roma, I guess, in their home stadium, but technically as a visitor. Um, but that was a lot thanks to a big, big mistake by Ibanez, a Roma center central center back. Um, I do like getting that half of a goal from Juve right now, though. I feel like Lazio were, were destined to be in this position because they're not really respected as one of the top clubs uh, by the Serie A marketplace. But that's one place where I feel like the Serie A marketplace has not done well. Lazio's defense has been pretty good this year, which is not something we're used to saying. Maurizio Sarri maybe is, has taken an effect. Uh, and Juve giving half of a goal seems like a lot right now, despite their recent uptick in form. So for the best bet for Syria, uh, um, Cremonese, I guess I lean under two and a half, but today on Friday, but I don't think that's close to making uh, the top of the list. Cremonese, I like getting one and a quarter, but I don't really want to fade Napoli. Lecce, not yet to a quarter. Uh, Sassuolo, I like at a quarter, but I feel like there's better things out there. I do like Atalanta a lot at home, getting a quarter from Inter Milan. Uh, Torino seems a little short at a half. I like Salernitana getting a quarter, um, like that under two and a half as well. I like Spezia getting a quarter, um, but I feel like that number is also likely to climb to a half. Um, Georgina, I don't think is enough for me to, to grab right now at three quarters. I want to see lineups for that one. And I do like Lazio getting a half of a goal at Juve. Uh, and I'm going to go with that one. Lazio getting a half of a goal from Juventus, I, I feel like is a good spot to be. Um, and, and they're going to be rocking trying to, to finish the the first half i mean both teams will be but i think juve um they've been playing better lately and i'm not sure they deserve it as much um from Serie A, we're going to move now to the german bundesliga uh which played midweek matches and uh we got a friday match though it's a battle of Borussia. It's Borussia Mönchengladbach hosting Borussia Dortmund currently Borussia Mönchengladbach a quarter goal underdog at home uh with all the juice on dortmund and it's hard to say how do Dortmund deserve this, considering how poorly they played uh, at Wolfsburg in the midweek. Um, but when you look at Borussia Mönchengladbach and their goalkeeper situation, which they're down to a third string keeper at this point, who also took a knee to the head and was awful to start. I think a 20 year old is uh, Jan Summers out with ankle ligament problems. And then their backup Sippel got hurt either in training or ended. I mean, he was man of the match apparently um, from last weekend, but didn't play this weekend. Wasn't in the team was injured. Um, I got to think that they're going to rush him back if they can. Uh, but that's also not a great sign because both Dortmund and are going to put their goalkeeper under pressure. Um, I would love to fade Dortmund as a road favorite pretty much against with anybody right now, but I don't think Gladbach's goalkeeper situation is good enough at the moment. Uh, over under three also looks pretty, pretty cheap. Uh, it overlooks good if they're playing with a 20 year old or a 17 year old, if he doesn't even start do that knee to the head from Remy Bensvaini. Uh, moving to Saturday, Augsburg hosting VFL Bulkham. Uh, currently Augsburg, a quarter goal favorite right now with most of the juice. And I mean, two teams that haven't been favored uh, in a very long time and might be the only time Augsburg are favored this season, um, which makes me lean towards Bulkham. They've been really bad away. Um, they've, Started to get an uptick, though, at home. Starting to play a little bit better. I think the, the shock of losing all their players that were on loan that really strengthened them. Um, they've kind of figured out a way to go. New manager, I'm not sure he's mattered too much. Um, but Augsburg just haven't really been delivering lately. And uh, as a favorite, that's a weird position for their be in. They've got a lot of flaws. Um, they did beat Bayern München here at home. Um, but results, results have not been good since then. Um, even with a, a first minute lead last weekend they weren't able to hold on uh and, and cover as, as a pretty sizable underdog so uh, i lean to bulkham definitely uh getting that quarter though i think i'd like to see half if i potentially could under two and three quarters looks nicer there potentially um in that quarter so I'll, I'll probably vacillate between those two before saturday kickoff by leverkusen then host bfb stuttgart uh leverkusen with a huge comeback win um to to come from a one nil deficit Stuttgart with a, a goal in the 97th minute literally last kick of the match on a corner kick um, that one was a knife in the heart I gotta say and, and probably hurt Erta Berlin even more than your boy but uh definitely hurt both of us uh Leverkusen a three-quarter goal favorite with all the juice right now uh maybe this climbs to a full goal and uh I'm not a believer in Leverkusen they've done a really good job of counterattacking with their pace which is who they are uh, but they've done that two consecutive match days in the Bundesliga off of corner kicks from the opposing team. And that to me, is just really poor management and, and just not thinking um, Stuttgart aren't exactly a team that I expect to have great management. I, I think the jury's still out on Javi Alonso for Bayer Leverkusen as well. And he's the big favorite here. 
Um, crowd certainly is going to feel better about them climbing off the bottom of the table. Never, of course, should they have been there. Um, but Stuttgart, you know, their offense looks a lot better. Silas, Wong, Silas has got great legs and starting to, to look like the attacker we thought he was, but actually a lot better finishing than he did uh, before he hurt his ACL. Um, but from where I look with Stuttgart, I feel like they've gotten a little bit better defensively. The the combination, um, I'm a little bit worried about Waturo Endo, who looked like he got knocked out cold uh, in the match in the midweek, and it probably is not available, especially as he eyes uh, the World Cup for Japan. Uh, but I lean to that three quarter of a goal, and I'm hoping it hits plus one, as the juice is certainly making it look like it might get there. Inter Berlin then hosts Köln, currently Erta, a quarter goal favorite at home, which is another situation uh, that the the home team is not used to being favored in uh colon have not been going well they did take a lead with a great goal first goal scored ever by vano schmitz um but they fell apart and a lot due to uh one bad deflection off a free kick where their uh their wall didn't perform or act properly and then they uh got caught on a counterattack, which is really silly i do think they're going to play aggressively and they've been playing so many matches which has unfortunately really impacted their ability to perform and i do wonder if if they just fell apart late and didn't have any pace left to to handle that uh leverkusen counterattack. though that should have been uh stefan baumgart their manager should have known that was coming and, and been a little bit smarter uh but erta are just not really a favorite they can't even hang uh they can't win matches that's a guarantee but they've also really struggled to even hang in matches late they, they fall behind three three nil a lot and fight back against the like top of the league fight back and lose three two it's happened at least twice that i've seen i think against Bayern and also against leipzig um unfortunately that's not good enough and as a favorite i just feel like it's a position they're not used to being in um it's like uh, someone who shops at mcdonald's is all of a sudden uh at javier's here in dallas and i feel like that's just a big big difference you're not really sure how to act in that type of mood um, and I don't think that's going to go very well. So Colin with no legs at all at this point, and that certainly concerns me, um, going on the road, fighting against a home crowd, but I think that quarter of a goal is too high. Hoffenheim then hosts Wolfsburg, currently Hoffenheim, a quarter goal favorite. Um, defense is looking really problematic at this point. Their offense is good, but isn't overcoming their defense. And Wolfsburg are the hottest team in the Bundesliga, I feel like, besides Bayern. Um, they got a big win against Dortmund on midweek and played and deserved that, I think, from the start. Uh, Niko Kovac, I think, has found a spot where he can excel, where there's expectations are are not as high as they were at Monaco uh, or at Bayern. And ultimately, they are playing well, and they're going against a team in Hoffenheim who play really well at home, but don't have much of a home field advantage, I don't think. Um, it's not a crowd advantage anyway. I think their offense just performs better there, and I think Wolfsburg can do enough to keep that really quiet. Voda Bremen then hosts Aubrey Leipzig, currently Voda, a half a goal underdog at home. Um Leipzig with a good performance against Freiburg. Um, they were the better team throughout, um, had a little bit of trouble putting the ball in the net, but once they did, they got two in a row, took advantage of substitutions and right away scored, which was huge. Um, I think from where I sit with Leipzig, their team, I, I still look to go against on the road, but I don't know that this is a, a time to do it. And, and ultimately with Nicolas Fulkrug, who uh, got hurt and, 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 I think on a goal that he scored against Schalke missed the Bayern München match and they got blown out, but I, I kind of basically dismissed the results against Bayern, especially on the road in München because they just destroy teams. But um, I lean to the home dog getting a half of a goal. I'm a little bit concerned though, fading Leipzig right now as they look like they are flying and their usual start to the season poorly fire their manager and then get the new guy in. And it doesn't really matter who it is. They just start playing well. Seems to be in full effect. Schalke, Nolfia then host Bayern München. Currently Schalke, a two and a quarter goal underdog at home in the nightcap, the big one on Saturday. Um, not sure why this is in this space um, other than two big clubs, I guess. Um, in a big arena, Schalke with a huge win midweek, finally did something right uh, and kept a clean sheet, which is also surprising, but good for my under. Thank you very much. Um, there have been a lot of pushes with Schalke on totals because of late goals. So I'm glad they held on for dear life. And that one uh, also makes the Bundesliga a little bit more competitive when the bottom team is not completely adrift, um, though they're still out of uh, contention quite a bit. Uh so bottom versus top, not great here. Uh, Byron are likely going to name their number here. Um, over under three and three quarters is monstrous for a Schalke team that aren't likely to contribute, uh, but they're going to fight. They're going to probably have a lot of physical tackles and might even take some red cards possibility for sure. Uh, but I'm not getting in the way of Bayern with the worst team in the Bundesliga. Moving to Sunday, Mainz hosting Eintracht Frankfurt. 
Um, Hines with that loss at Schalke, I mean, pretty disappointing. They've had, they're coming, coming back to earth. Um, but the Bundesliga market loved them, I got to say. And it, it may be because they're sitting so highly in the table, but the performances weren't there. And they're starting to get the results that performances have deserved. I don't really know what Bill Svensson is doing with his back line. It seems like his three center backs being as defensive as possible switch to one center back and two kind of uh, wing backs or full backs that are playing center back. That hasn't really worked very well. He pulled off his center back at like the 35th minute. I don't think due to injury, I think due to performance against Schalke because he was getting boat raced. Uh, that's not a good sign with Eintracht Frankfurt coming in, just scoring goals for fun at this point. Um, Eintracht Frankfurt, the favorite right now at Pickham with all the juice right now on the road. Uh, and I think it's deserved, uh, though carnival atmosphere should be pretty good in mind. I think it just started or starts today. Um, nothing for me to do here. And I just don't think even mine's is a home dog. I'm really looking. I'm not looking to fade Frankfurt. And last but not least, Freiburg hosting Union Berlin. Currently Freiburg, a half a goal, goal favorite. Um, really listless performance midweek at uh, Leipzig. Fought their way back into it a little bit when they made substitutions. Got a great goal from Lucas Kubla, who's scoring more goals in his career in this like short season than he has ever. Um, but I do like Union getting half a goal on the road at Fibo. Um, Legs are tough for Union at this point. They've tried to fight their way into the knockout stages in the Europa League. I think they did that successfully. I think only Köln were the only team in Germany to not make it. Um but Freiburg had, were able to rest everyone for the last match day, which was good. And I think I, I figured it would have put them in a, a better position for a really tough stretch with Köln in the Conference League, Leipzig in the Champions League, and Union Berlin also in, in the Europa League, all in a row in the German Bundesliga. Um, but Freiburg, you know, they their offense isn't great. I've really struggled fading them, and I've done really well backing them uh, over the years. But I, I do lean to Union, and I think they're going to bring a really tough metal into Freiburg. I, I think at a quarter of a goal, I'm less interested, but I like that that a, a draw wins a full bet right now in Union. So I like that half of a goal. Also lean to under two and a quarter um, as we speak. So to recap for the Bundesliga, Borussia uh, Mönchengladbach, I can't back their goalkeeper situation. Uh, I don't think that's going to be better today on Friday. Uh, I do like Bochum getting a quarter at Augsburg, just two really bad teams. And one has to be favored apparently based on location. Um Stuttgart, I like getting three quarters at Leverkusen, but I want to get the full goal before I'm fully invested. I like Köln getting a quarter at Erta, but I worry about their legs. I really like Wolfsburg, their quarter at Hoffenheim. I feel like they're playing way better, almost the best in the league at this point. I lean to Vitter Bremen at home getting a half, but I'm not sure I want to fade Leipzig at the moment. Not touching the Schalke match, so I am very interested in watching it. Um, nothing to do with mines at this point in Union. I still have questions. I want to see what that lineup looks like. So my best bet for the Bundesliga, I'm going to put out uh, the VFL Wolfsburg on the road, getting a quarter of a goal from Hoffenheim. Wolfsburg will be my pick. Last but not least, we'll go through French League. Uh, they did not have midweek matches. Uh, big for the Champions League side and all the Euro European ones to kind of get some rest. Um, we'll see if that's impacted or reflected in the numbers. Uh, Lyon, a three-quarter goal favorite today on Friday to Nice. It's a big number. And uh, Lyon, I did back them at, at Marseille. Uh, I feel like they deserve better than losing one nil, but um, ultimately they've been overperforming their perform. They've been getting better results than their performances have deserved ever since the new manager came in. I'm not really a believer in Blanc, Laurent Blanc. Um, I'm not really a believer in Lucien Favre for Nice as well. Uh, I think he's Swiss, but uh, made his name and, and where I first saw him was his disaster performance at Borussia Dortmund. Um, ultimately Nice getting three quarters of a goal, I think is too high. Um, there is, a, I think, a difference between these two teams, but uh, I don't really think Lyon's goal scoring is that good that they should be a three-quarter goal favorite. So lean to Nice getting three quarters in Friday's match. Moving to Saturday, Lyon's hosting Clermont Foot. Currently, Lyon's a one-and-a-quarter goal favorite, and they're just a team I don't want to fade right now, especially at home where they go nuts. The song it all, the blood and gold, are, the crowd is literally insane. Uh, they've been playing a pretty soft schedule lately because I haven't been able to back them. Uh, but at least I've saved money going against them. Ren then hosts Toulouse, currently ran a one goal favorite with all the juice right now. Um, might climb a little bit higher, and that makes me more interested in Toulouse. Uh, Ren with a pretty fortunate draw, I think, in their last match um, on the road at Lille. Um, goalkeeper Seth Mandanda, I'm really surprised he made the French National uh, French World Cup team. He's been scary to me, uh, especially because I have Ren to finish in a top five position. That looks great right now. If the season could end today, that'd be awesome. Uh, but it won't. And Toulouse, I, I do like coming up from from uh, 
league league to uh won the the championship last season uh get automatic promotion they looked really capable um and as this one climbs above one i'm, I'm interested though fading ren as a big favorite is a scary thing that has not worked out well for me in the past and probably hasn't worked out well for anyone psg then hosts all currently psg a two and three quarter goal favorite uh, all the juice on all share surprisingly, but that might flip by the time game kicks off. And I'm not interested in fading the Parisians with a newly promoted side that looks like relegation fodder. Brest hosts Trois. Brest a quarter goal favorite with all the juice. I think that's a little high based on their inability to score. Trois have been playing better lately, and I think they really started with a good challenge of PSG match. They played really tightly for 80 minutes or so. Um, as this climbs to a half, I get more interested in Trois. Nantes hosts Aljacio, currently not a half a goal favorite. Oh my god! All the calls come in. Of course, I, when I when I put it on Do Not Disturb, I forgot to take it off. Anyway, sorry everybody. Um, Ajacio currently a half a goal underdog on the road at Nolt. Um, Nolt's offense has been pretty problematic, um, tr- struggling to, to to balance. Oh my god! Mom, Mom stop calling. Anyway, um, and. From where I sit with Ajaccio, uh, they just haven't really had much of an offense this season. And going on the road to Nolte, I mean, it's going to be a tough situation, but Nolte finally gets a midweek off, and that's a big deal for him. So um, I think, I mean, I, I guess fading Nolte has not been a bad idea this season at all, uh, but I don't think that Ajaccio are the one I want to do it with on Sunday. Uh, Lille then host Angers. Currently, Lille, a one-and-a-half goal favorite. Angers are uh, a really bad team at this point and look like they're going down. Uh, four teams go down in Lille, uh, and that's a big problem. Um, man, uh, Lille is a one and a half goal favorite team is really large, but I think they kind of deserve it based on where these two teams are heading. Montpellier then hosts Rems. Currently Montpellier pick them, but with all the juice at home. And that says kind of how far Montpellier have fallen. Rems are not really a very good team. They've gotten uh, a little bit more respect ever since they changed managers, though I think Oscar Garcia was doing a great job for Rems and really fell uh, victim to a lot of player sales and, and trying to figure out who they were at the start of the season. Um, but whoever's taken over, um, a fellow uh, redhead like me, uh, he has been doing well, don't know his name, but uh, I'm hoping that they climb to a quarter goal underdog because fading Montpellier right now seems like a good position to be in. Uh, Strasbourg then hosts Lorient, currently Strasbourg, a quarter goal favorite. Um, to like one of the top teams in the league on a table. Certainly it's not deserved based on everyone's strategies, but Lorient keep covering. Maybe they don't win all these matches, but as an underdog, they draw and you're at least taking some profit back to you. Um, I see that as plus expected value and Strasbourg are one of the worst at winning games in the league this season. Uh, Shocked that their manager hasn't been relieved of his duties just yet. Maybe I missed that, but Maybe that's going to happen in the World Cup when they lose in this matchup. But Lorient getting a quarter at Strasbourg is way too high. Um, should be pick them, I think. Uh, so I lean that way for sure. And last but not least, Monaco hosts Marseille. Monaco, a quarter goal favorite at home. Um, with all the juice on Marseille on the road, actually. Uh, Monaco doesn't play that well at home. Um, don't have a huge crowd support. Maybe it's a big stadium. Maybe there are other things to do in Monaco, uh, like be on a yacht or something. Uh, but Marseille, you know, they've... It's good for them. They didn't have Champions League midweek, uh, though Monaco were happy they didn't have Europa League either. Um, I feel like this number just seems like Marseille are getting a ton of respect. I'm not sure it's really deserved. I don't think they played that well against Lyon, but got their one chance, stuck it in, won uh, the match that way. Um, and so I don't know if there's a lot for me to do with that one. Uh, I do like generally the underdog in the nightcap in France, but uh, I don't know necessarily that there's enough there for me, especially when Marseille looks like they're trending towards pick them. So the best bet in France, I do like Nice getting three quarters of a goal today at Lyon. Uh, I'm going to skip Clermont and uh, I le- lean to loose, but I want to see that number climb a little bit. Um, still, I'm not even sure I, I, I want to fade Ren because their offense is awesome. And Toulouse are going to be aggressive and going to leave themselves open quite a bit because that's how they play. Alger is a skip. I do like Trois if they move to, to a half a goal, uh, like at a quarter anyway. Uh, Jossio, I lean that way, but I'm not sure I like it too much. I kind of, I guess I lean under two and a quarter a little bit more for two offenses that aren't really great. Um, Alger are, are a skip. Uh, Rems, I'm, I'm hoping they climb to a quarter, but nothing to do just yet. Uh, Lorient getting a quarter I do like a lot at Strasbourg because I feel like that line is uh, the legal market is just very, being very stubborn that the Lorient are not good but I love their counter-attacking style and Tara Mulfi is one of the best strikers in the world that hasn't been discovered yet it seems and uh, last but not least I, I lean to Marseille as a, a dog on the road at Monaco but it's very expensive and at a quarter I'm not sure I like it enough so uh, for my best bet for France I'm going to do Lorient plus one quarter at Strasbourg 
Um, so that's this episode. Uh, we're going to see if there's a Copa del Rey um, episode coming out um, for those matches that I think start on Saturday. Uh, we'll see because there's usually a bunch of huge lines because essentially all of the Premier Division teams on the road at at dogs of 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 spain ultimately um but to recap so the best bets for each of the leagues and we'll give you an ultimate best bet before we get out of here um you follow me on twitter the real underscore g warner if you're on youtube please hit subscribe like the videos that always helps uh if you're on spotify or apple Podcasts, please subscribe give five stars leave a review it'd be really huge to get me up um and so i can do more content especially for the world cup coming up i might go like group by group i'm not really sure how i'm going to do it but i'm going to do a lot of podcasts coming up so stay tuned betting the pitch also on pregame.com and hopefully some other things that are coming out that we'll uh talk about soon um so for premier league my best bet there is nottingham Forest, a quarter goal underdog at home against crystal palace uh nothing for spanish la liga as i've already said uh, but in Italy, I, Lazio getting a half a goal on the road at Juventus. Um, then we'll move to the Bundesliga, and that is Wolfsburg getting a quarter of a goal on the road at, uh, easy for me to remember, at Hoffenheim. And last but not least in France, we have uh, FC Lorient getting a quarter on the road at Strasbourg. My ultimate best bet for this podcast, the last one potentially before the World Cup, uh, we'll see what happens again with Copa del Rey. Is BFL Wolfsburg getting a quarter of a goal on the road at Hoffenheim? Two teams going in opposite directions, and I think Niko Kovac has really brought an offense to a team that is known for its defense. Um, love the way Wolfsburg are playing. Nothing but momentum for their midweek match, while Hoffenheim took a really tough result midweek. Um, I love the situation. I love the scenario, and I love that they're getting a quarter of a goal. Uh, I think they go into Hoffenheim and they can steal a win. Draw also is a nice alternative where you're still profitable. Again, follow me, the real underscore G Warner. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see everyone soon.